Good morning, and welcome to our video devotion for Saturday, February the 27th, 2021. I hope that you are enjoying the blessing of a quiet and uneventful Saturday morning. And I also hope you're ready for a challenging time of Bible study and prayer. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about the uh, terrorist attacks on the United States Capitol on January the 6th. Many of the participants had brought into a theory that said their actions would not only help uh, President Donald Trump stay in power, but would also help trigger the events that would lead to the second coming of Jesus. What can I say? There's a lot of ignorance concerning Jesus' return to earth, the event that's sometimes called the rapture. And by the way, did you know that the word rapture never appears anywhere in the Bible? It's kind of odd that people get so worked up about it for some reason. You may not know this, but most of the theories about the rapture and the millennium has only, have only been around for the last 150 years or so. And remember, these theories are just made-up, man-made speculations about what will happen when Jesus comes again. That's why, personally, I don't waste my time obsessing over all these theories. I'd rather just listen to what the Bible says about Jesus' second coming. So here's what I want us, and here's what I want us to do today as we as we read from God's word. I don't I don't want us to try to make the Bible fit into our preconceived notions about what it ought to say. Just let's let's just let the Bible speak for itself. Now the place we're going to begin is by turning to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to begin with the 13th verse. Listen to what it says here. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Now this word here, ignorant, literally means to be uninformed or lack understanding. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible is telling us that God wants us to be informed about Jesus' second coming. And by the way, the 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, contains the most direct teaching on Jesus' second coming found anywhere in the Bible. Revelation does what it does, but this is the gold standard for understanding Jesus' return. All right, let's pick it up at verse 14. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. Now this is really very interesting. Paul is tying faith in Jesus, namely faith that says that He died for our sin on the cross, that He was physically raised from the dead on the third day, He's tying all of that to Jesus' second coming. He's saying just as these things are essential to faith, this is also essential to faith. And because the second coming is essential to our faith, it's natural for Christians to wonder about it. I mean, the second coming is not some sweet by-and-by fantasy. The second coming is a fundamental truth of Christian faith. All right, let's continue on in verse 14. God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will come down out of heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Think about what is the Bible is saying is going to happen when Jesus comes again. Jesus will come down out of heaven accompanied by shouts and trumpet blasts. Then the dead in Christ will rise. Then those who are still alive will rise up to meet Jesus in the air. And then we will all be together with Jesus. Now, if you've read this passage of Scripture very carefully, you probably know that there seems to be a conflict here between the, 16th, the, the 14th and the 16th verses. In the 14th verse, it says, God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. 
meaning those who have already who have died knowing Jesus as their Savior. While in the 16th verse it says that after Jesus appears, the dead in Christ will rise first. So what gives? Are the dead in Christ with, Je- with Jesus or will they rise up to meet Him in the air? Now some Christians have resolved this question by expressing a belief in something called soul sleep. Soul sleep is a theory that says that when you're, you die, your physical body is buried and your soul sleeps in the grave until Jesus comes again. Now here's the thing about soul sleep. It does seem to so- resolve this problem that seems to exist between verse, 1 Thessalonians 4:14 4, and 16. The only problem is soul sleep is in conflict with other passages of Scripture. If you still have your Bibles, turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 6 through 8. Listen to what it says here. Therefore we are always confident, and knowing that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Now here the Bible is teaching us that there's no lag time between physical death and the experience of being at home with the Lord. The moment you breathe your last breath here on earth, you instantly go to be with Jesus. So, how do you understand what 1 Thessalonians chapter 14 is telling us? Well, the simplest explanation here is also the best. When you die, you go to be with Jesus, where you will remain until the second coming. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57, helps us understand that just a little bit better. So let's look at, look at what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, with that in mind, Let's turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Listen to what it says here. Now we know if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, that this is a reference to our our physical bodies, we have a building from God, this is our resurrection body, an eternal house in heaven not made by human hands. Meanwhile we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose, and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. You know, if God the Father delays Jesus' second coming long enough, it is inevitable that you will go through the process of becoming ashes to ashes. Well, which will be absolutely no problem for God. As I've told people who worry about cremation, the one who created the world knows exactly how to call a, a, dis, a, a disintegrated body from the grave. All right, let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 17. Listen to what it says here. After that... We who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. You know, one of the dangers in studying the second coming is going beyond what the Bible teaches us. As long as you stick to the Word of God, you cannot go wrong. If you go beyond the Bible, you're indulging in speculation. And that's where trouble starts which sounds like a self-evident statement. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of controversy around the matter of the second coming. 
You see, some Christians read 1 Thessalonians 4.17 and it, believe, it mean, that it means that during the second coming, Christians will meet Jesus in the air and then accompany Him back to earth as He establishes His eternal kingdom on earth. Others read the same verses and conclude, we will meet Jesus in the air and then we will go with Him to heaven, wherever that's located. Now, personally, I'm convinced that Jesus is going to establish His earthly kingdom on a, a resurrected and redeemed new earth. But let's stay focused on the big picture here. Whether it's here on a resurrected earth or in heaven, we are going to be with Jesus forever. That's what God wants us to remember about the second coming. Look at what it says again. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage, that word can also be translated as comfort. Therefore, comfort each other with these words. Here's a fact. Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonians because they were deeply discouraged. Now, Paul doesn't get bogged down in all the detail and speculation, but he wants these people who are grieved to remember one thing. Jesus is coming again. Those who have died in Christ or who live until the coming of Jesus will have an equal share in the second coming. And then after Jesus comes, we will be together with Jesus forever. Encourage one another with these words. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it's so good to be able to spend this time in Bible study thinking about the matter of Jesus' second coming. Father, we don't know when it will happen. Only You do. It may be during our lifetimes. It may be hundreds of generations after our lifetime. But we draw strength in knowing that Jesus is coming again and that we will be with Jesus forever in heaven. Father, we love You. Jesus, we love You. Holy Spirit, we love You. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm sure this has not begun to answer all the questions you might have about Jesus' second coming, but I do hope it will help you keep your eyes on the big prize of knowing that Jesus is coming again. Also, don't forget that our Sunday morning worship celebration begins live streaming at 10.20 tomorrow. Uh, you, can, you can go to our church's Facebook page or you can uh, go to youtube.com and in the search box type in Sunset Road Baptist Church. Our in-person worship begins at 10.30 and I hope to see you then if you can be here. Finally, don't forget that we'll be having more devotions on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday of next week. I hope that you'll join me then. Until then, have a wonderful day. Please know I love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.